Okay, I believe this is our th the third question. No, this is actually the fourth question. The instructions for it didn't print. They, on your test, it printed correctly, but on this electronic version, it printed on the previous previous page. But it says solve uh, each of the following equations for x and show your work. So I I would say for the most part, um, we did a pretty good job. Um, I occasionally people would you know miss a step or start doing some interesting things and uh, their solution kind of f fell off. So as you look at your test, try to ask yourself the question, what did I do and, and why is it that what I did perhaps is not correct? So look at that closely. If I'm solving A, I would probably begin by just rewriting the right hand side, or left hand side rather. And over on the left hand side or right hand side I would use the distributive property so I would rewrite this as 4x um, plus the number 14 and then I'm going to subtract 2x. Now it turns out two of the things I have on this side are like terms right I can combine 4x and negative 2x and those combine to just give me 2x so I can write this as 2x plus 5 equals 2x plus 17 which is problematic because you can see if if I take away 2x from each side what we're left here is this statement that 5 uh, is the same thing as this is not supposed to be 17 uh, 2 times 7 is clearly 14 thank you Mr. Roberts uh, but 5 is the same thing as the number 14 and this is absurd um, and Basically, what's happening here is it doesn't matter what value of x I select because I had an equal number of x's on each side, right? Both had this positive 2x. There's no value of x that I could pick that will make this true. So when we see these contradictions like this, clearly 5 is not 14, we would just write no solution. Um, let's look at b. Again, this time I'll be more careful in my application of the distributive property. Here we have a 10x plus 6. Over on the other side, um, there is 6 times x minus 3. I'm going to take away 6x's from each side. And when I do that, on the left-hand side, I'm left with 4 of them. Uh, plus 6 equals negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 6 from each side. So that gives me 4x equals negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. Again, putting that step there might be helpful for you, um, but just look at it closely. And then the final thing that I would do is I would divide both sides by 4, right? And then I might rewrite my answer as x is equal to negative 9 fourths. Many of you are still unsatisfied with that answer and you feel like you should do something with it, but I just encourage you to leave that uh, improper fraction there. Um, if we needed for some reason to convert it to a mixed number, we could do that, but really this is probably a nice place to park our answer. Uh, let's move on to question, by the way, there are no common factors there, there's no giant one, so we would, if we could simplify that by removing a giant one, we would, but those, uh, that's not possible there. Okay, so let's look at C. Um, couple things I'm going to do is uh, on the right hand side I'm going to go ahead and combine the 4 and the 2 X's so that gives me a total of 6 of them plus 2. On the left hand side when I distribute my 3 I end up with uh, 6 times X minus 3 and then plus 5. So oh we've been down this road before right if I subtract the 6 times X from each side I'm left with negative 3 plus 5 um, equals 2, uh, positive 2, and it turns out when I combine negative 3 and 5, I do get 2, so this ends up becoming 2 is equal to 2. What that means is it doesn't matter what I pick for x, any value of x is a solution, right? So in this case, what we would say, yes, it is true, if I ask you how many solutions there are, you could say there's an infinite number of solutions, true, um, but more precisely, uh, what are solutions? Well, solutions are anything as long as they're from the set of real numbers. So we would just say all real numbers. Um, this is not a contradiction. This is a statement that's always true. That's why we have all real numbers. Above, we had a statement that was a contradiction, and that's why we had no solution. Let's look at D. 
Um, I'm going to take away an x from each side. That gives us 3x plus 1 is equal to negative 5. Um, I'll subtract 1 from each side. That gives me that 3x is equal to negative 6, taking away 1 from both sides. By the way, I, I don't like how I wrote this negative 5. That's the kind of thing that you could lose track of. So try and make it very clear so you're not losing things like negative symbols. Uh, now I would divide both sides of this by 3. And when I do that, uh, because it does simplify, I would write this as x is the number negative 2. Uh, moving on to part E. Again, the distributive property seems to be everywhere. So I have 6 times x plus 12 um, plus 4 more x's plus the number 4. Very intentional. I was slowing myself down to make sure that each of these uh, terms, right, these are things that are being added together, are getting this factor of 4. They're both being multiplied by 4. And on the other side, we have a 3x minus 5. If I simplify the left-hand side, you can see there's a total of 10, 10x uh, and then plus 16, and that equals 3x minus 5. So if I take away 3x from each side of this equation, I have equal things. I'm subtracting equal things. I get equal things. That leaves a 10x minus 3x is 7x plus 16 equals negative 5. I'm going to subtract 16 from each side. And when I combine 5 and negative 16, I end up getting negative 21. So 7x is negative 21. And therefore, when I divide by 7, uh, we get that x is negative 21 sevenths, uh, which is the number negative 3. So x is negative 3. Uh, on this test, we didn't really talk about checking solutions yet. I did notice that several of you did check solutions. Um, but we'll talk about that more in, in the future. Uh, last equation we have here, I'm going to, um, well, when I combine these two, you can see I get 3x minus 5 equals 3x and then plus 5. Oh, if I take away 3x from both sides, um, minus 3x, I get that negative 5 is equal to 5. And that's awfully tempting. It's a lot closer than uh, what we had before when we said, visually it is anyways, 5 is equal to 14. But these are complete opposites of each other, right? And certainly a negative 5 is quite a bit different than 5. So again, um, for this particular equation, there's no solution.